Hello guys, today finally um, I have a chance or time to actually put my hands on this um, Hoham XG1 uh, wearable gimbal and take a look how it works and what's inside. Because always wondering um, if I can tweak stuff around and see how stuff works and if I modify it, if I can modify it. So this time we're gonna take a look what's inside this Hoham, how it operates, what kind of battery is inside and things like that. So let's begin. First of all, we're gonna remove this uh, bracket from over here, which is gonna just uh, make our job a little bit harder. And I still want to come up with some sort of 3D printable contraption, which makes uh, installing the camera so much easier. Because actually unscrewing this huge screw all the way in and out, two times is major pain in the ass i must tell you yeah whoever come up with this yeah anyways so we clearly need some torques uh, no not torques those are just hexes four one two here and four here in the base so let's get some okay uh so here's i'm gonna start from the bottom it's gonna be four hex, which I don't know the actually name of. Uh, I think it's look like it's I don't know five sixty fours, whatever it's imperial stuff. The set I have is all imperial, and obviously no millimeters there at all. Okay. Just try to pull this backing out and it's, it seems like it's slightly glued or something. Okay, let's try to open on this side as well. Uh, looks like those screws have a Loctite on them, which is good. Doesn't fall out. Oh, okay. Very interesting. Okay. So what do we have here? Right away we have a PCB, which is pretty cool because I thought we have to dig quite a long time to actually get somewhere. But right out of the box we see some ST jobby and it uh, looks like it is... It's F103, STM32 F103 CAT6. This is Cortex M3, pretty basic configuration, uh, which uh, really used like everywhere these days. And it's getting kind of outdated because there are newer versions of it. So, but here we are, uh, we can continue and see where we are. I already see batteries here. Two, looks like two, no, one. I see, for now, I see only one is uh, 18350 which obviously gonna fit in that uh, form factor much better than 650 it's not enough space but okay let's go further not sure uh, there are some screws on top not sure which is uh, the better to start top or bottom but I will continue opening on this side first okay I unscrewed those two and looks like it's still pretty solid so I have to see I'm gonna unscrew this panel but looks like it's not coming out and it's plasticky and it's already broken here wow I guess it's broke somewhere in action. This thing fall, fell a few times for me or I dropped it a few times already. So it's like, oh, it's broken already here. Jeez, Misha. Sorry for going off screen. Uh 
aha, this is the whole thing one piece. And I honestly thought that's gonna be aluminium, but looks like it's just a pretty soft plastic, which is broken in several pieces already. So yeah, it fell on the ground once for me, unfortunately. And that's kind of shatters. So yeah, that part is really kind of flimsy plastic, which actually breaks very easily. Yeah, unfortunate, unfortunate. But rest is much better so here we are what we have here is one 18350 battery only one in other gimbals i actually saw two so that's the advantage and disadvantage of this guy because it has one battery previous gimbal i disassembled had two but it was smaller and lighter it looks like this battery just inserted so i'm pretty sure i can just pop it out yeah coming out this is good because technically anyone can just rip oh well it's really pretty heavy and it is 900 milliamp 18350 which means this is 35 millimeter um, long so cool without this battery it's it's got to it starts to be much lighter so okay so this part is already uh, unscrewed but it's still kind of uh, connected so I bet it has some pins going down to the motor and uh, securely attaching to it so I have to kind of push a bit I guess to dislodge it no it's not coming out that easily let me see uh -huh. It could be a few issues. First of all, uh, to continue further down, first of all, um, those battery tabs, they are, I think they are inserted and then soldered over here. So that's going to be a bit of a challenge to pull it out. Yeah, exactly. If you see the opening over here in this metal uh, frame is so much smaller than the battery top. So they clearly were inserted first and then solder it on this side and on that side so that's kind of no go so i'm not sure if we're gonna unsolder it at this time so let's try to attack it from different angle and see where we go okay i'm gonna probably gonna open this one because it's kind of interfering right now So this is the um, the bracket which holds the camera and I think it has power you can power your um, GoPro or any other action camera straight from the gimbal but giving them it has only 900 milliamp not sure how long it's gonna last but you can power your gimbal from somewhere else Okay, why it's not coming out? So many screws, it's still not coming out. Is it glued? It's not clipped for sure. Looks like it's. I hate this. And this is again that kind of same kind of flimsy plastic which I'm afraid I already start bending this USB slot. It's clearly glued. Oh yeah, it's probably some kind of tops. It was not glued, it was just really, really snug down there. Okay. Let me find it back. No, it actually had two tops. So one top on this side and one top on this side. 
okay. Yes, I bent it slightly, but that's okay. Anyways, okay, there is nothing interesting to see here. We have to kind of dig further. So let's try to go. No, okay, I'll change my mind. I will not do it on this side. I will continue because it's gonna. I think it's gonna be quite something quite interesting on this side, and I would have to kind of circumvent back. So I rather just continue. Like I still this bracket is on the way, but I can't do it like this. Okay, so now we will try to open the motor. This is gonna be top of the motor. Okay, those screws are different. Those two are different. Try to kind of sort screws together. Okay, those are longer to connecting the motor and other things on a on a frame. Okay. So kind of disconnected it, but still oh, okay. It's probably one more screw is underneath here. There's a rubber um, kind of insert, kind of covering and protecting contacts over here. I don't know how would I nicely picked it up without damaging anything. I don't know if it's glued. If it's glued, it will be so much more pain in the ass. Yeah, it is glued. Oh. But it's peelable. I can totally peel it off. And there is one more screw. That's what I was expecting. I'm gonna just peel it all away. Okay, so yeah, it has the glue, it's one sided. So we're gonna put it right here. I'm gonna put it right here in the frame. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this bracket on top is really make it hard to reach. And here we are, it's a Philips, Philips kind of screw over here. So it's, it's really annoying to change your uh, screwdriver bits because of this kind of construction, but I guess. Here we are, it's all coming apart. Yeah, it's all coming apart, but not the way I want it to, unfortunately. So this motor, and this, this by the way, rubber as well, this one. This this is rubber. This motor is still stays in place because it is covered by uh, this PCB, which is soldered over here. Huh. There is no easy way of pulling it out, fortunately. Okay, well, I think about it if I, and I'm making my decision if I want to completely, you know, unsolder it and continue or I want to do something else with it. But for now, I will just continue digging through that. Okay, so let's do the same with, oh, this is going to be easier because it has... Looks like I just need second screwdriver. So I'm gonna remove this Phillips, which is highly likely I would need further down the road. Okay, so let's open this guy. Then do a good job setting it. Sorry for the noises, this thing is very scratchy on the ta desk here, but. Oh, that's much longer screws. That's cool. Okay, that's what I expected. So there is a connector, it's pretty, it's, it's, I'm pretty sure that will be the same connector over here in this motor, which actually plug PCB plugs into. All right, and what we have over here is a little PCB, which is really hard to show you. 
yeah so here we are little PCB right there which consists of two um, active components and uh, two six pin jobbies of some sort which we probably can just try to pull out just to disconnect all this yeah it'll be easier what about this PCB can I pull it out okay this is just Oh, cool. Looks like PCB just glued to... Oh, no, no, no. I found a little screw. Ta-da! Oh, wow! There's another controller here, which is what kind of... It's pretty much the same guy. Hmm interesting so look, those, those probably motor drivers and this guy is microcontroller so essentially this totally look like is it is it similar to um uh quadcopter like motor controllers but this is too overkill for to have like um the arm cortex m3 here so usually those um Mm, uh, motor controllers for uh, quadcopters they just have uh, some uh, at atmel kind of part this one this one is overkill so I don't know have to continue and uh, to understand a bit more about it a little screw come here okay so this can be set aside for the moment okay that's not supposed to glue in here Okay, let's continue further down the road. Okay, let's use our torque and... Okay, let's turn the better this way. Just unscrew. It's pretty much the same story. I have to go with my tiny screwdriver bit over here and try to peel it off one side or another, whichever I can start. So this time I able to do it on this side. A little bit shorter. Ow! It's really stuck to my everywhere. Okay. Let's uh, remove this Philips. Okay, it's detached, but obviously it's gonna just hang in there because I won't be able to. Maybe it just doesn't even make sense to actually unscrew this Philips. It's just not gonna give us any anything essentially. I'm just gonna put it back in to prevent the dangling of the thing. Okay, so that's another motor, uh, brushless motor. Okay, this side, probably gonna be those long screws again. Open up, okay, pull it out. So we have similar situation like PC, PCB and gonna now we know this can be pulled out so another glue thing. So and now we have a little bit more con con contacts here, yeah, sorry, connectors here. Uh, so a whole bunch of actually of them. Uh, I have three. One of them is actually chaining, it's like they chain from one to another, neck to next one to next one. And this particular one is, let me see if it's similar to one I we saw earlier. Yeah, and this one has microcontrollers, it's essentially clones also. of, of uh, the same kind. But this one even has even more because, because I can't detach this guy. So now we can free, 
free it from. So it, uh, pretty much the same microcontroller, 1032F103C cat C8 T6. Looks like it's the same kind. Is it the same kind? Yep, it's the same kind. Okay, and then let's just dig further and I think we will have to peel this soft. Hope I not. Oh, I might damage it. It's kind of sucks. I don't like that because it's really soft. In previous, like in other uh, gimbal I tore down, disassembled, this one was actually hard rub harder rubber, not hard. Like as similar as this kind of rubber, like for like this kind of rubber. This one is very soft. It's more like a foamy kind of rubber. And yeah, it sucks. Gonna damage it, and I don't like it. Clearly there are some screws underneath, but just the fact I have to kind of, maybe I can just, oh, I don't like this, but I have no choice. Hmm. Or another option would be just just try to find where the screws are and just like let me first try. Yeah, it's not easy to find actually. <laughs> oh, I don't want to destroy the thing. I don't think it has anything on this side. Okay, let's let's open. It's already open on this side. Let's just pull this out. I think it just connected. Ah, okay. Well, maybe I didn't have to. Okay, let's try that. Well, still not gonna see what I wa want to see. Maybe I would, but. Okay, we kind of disconnected what's here. Not gonna help us much, right? Okay, so yeah, the, this is very soft. Well, maybe I would be able to slowly. Oh, actually, idea in order to pull this kind of rubbery thing is you have to really warm them up, it usually helps. Aha! Aha! That's the interesting part. It's a Bluetooth GP of some sort. And it's 1822. What is that? Is that an XP job or something? Oh, I see, I see. So what do we have here? So this is... Oh, okay, now I understand. Because that's why this thing is plastic. Because they need to uh, have Bluetooth penetrate this metal case. So they pull it all the way up in here. So the Bluetooth uh, and power for the, the camera is here. That's pretty cool. That's nice. So I still cannot get in. And I think I need to get in. So I'll try. Try my best to get into this guy nicely and slowly okay I'll be back I have to use um, the hair dryer in order to kind of warm this up and pull it out because I don't want to damage it I'll be back so it was so much easier to you uh, to use hair dryer for the for this purpose and peel out all this um, kind of rubbery protection here and now we have access to those screws and the motor is still warm from the hair dryer yeah so hair dryer helps to soften the, the, the glue and uh, make this peel process so much more painless and probably less damaging
to the rubber itself. Well, you have to not overheat the rubber, it's gonna melt it, but. Mmm, that's interesting. Have to kind of feed this thing back in. Even more screws, gee, that's really, really. Fill with screws of all sorts, which very, by the way, it's very nice to see the not of, not on all of them but like loctite so we're gonna probably try to put loctite uh, back uh, because i don't want this thing to fall apart Ta -da! okay finally and that's what i was looking for i was like understand what kind of accelerometer is here and it this looks like st jobby no it's really hard to see super tiny as usual and P65, MP65. That's a good, that's a good one. Okay, uh, let me detach. Yeah, that's that's interesting. That's oh, it's much longer. Oh, I still won't be able to pull it out. That sucks. <laughs> Curious, how they how did they do it? So they had to look. So even if I disconnected all this stuff, I still won't be able to like pull it out because of those connectors, they are actually larger than the opening. Even if I, yeah, I won't be able to. Yeah, it's not gonna go out. Anyway, so they probably crimp all this contraption after they uh, assembled, they put the PCB on here. So they had to feed the wires obviously through this central hub over here. And then actually had to cream them after. So this is, yeah, this is interesting. Okay, that's uh, all we have on this side. And another PCB over here. So those are slightly different as you see. Uh, kind of similar, but slightly different. So they, the general orientation of chips are the same on this side. It's again slightly different, yeah, yeah, it's slightly different. Here we are, guys. So uh, this is the pretty much all what was uh, Hohem as XG1. Uh, ex the exception is that I, I had to desolder the battery tops in order to actually get further down with this PCB, and I, I don't think I wanted to do do this at this moment. So what essentially gonna be on the other side? So nothing going to be on over here, right underneath this metal plate. Okay, so uh, on, in this area, it's pretty much touching the uh, metal case. Over under this will be pretty much similar to what we have over here because the picture repeats several times. So essentially going to be driver for uh, the motor and the connector just like so in order to pull those wires further down uh, to the uh, next motors. So. The major part over here in this PCB is the microcontroller itself. I did a lot of research in order to figure out a bunch of components which uh, comprises all this contraption. So here we are. So Hoham XG1 consists of three STM32F103CA86. This is Cortex M3 uh, microcontrollers or uh, microprocessors, I would say, from uh, ST. Uh, so that's pretty decent thing and obviously because it's the much more advanced 32 bit microcontroller it may do many things the good like crazy part of uh, this in comparison to uh, my other microcontroller I disassembled earlier that this guy has three on each motor so sorry each motor controller board so that's a lot of uh, microcontrollers here so uh, if you go further um this guy has also like um okay let's start just talking about so 
uh, so here's the main board it has one microcontroller so second uh, big chip here is uh, seal 2104 which is um, USB to uh, UART bridge. Uh, this is essentially to talk USB to a uh, microcontroller. Uh, interesting enough, I don't know what we can actually program through USB, but apparently it's possible because it's not just power, it's also some data coming to the microcontrollers over here, which is pretty cool. Then we have also a power regulator circuit over here, which is and a uh, lithium, uh, lithium battery charger. Here's the lithium battery which need to be charged. It's a ESMT EMC5755. This is, was really hard to find out what the hell is this, but finally I got it. This, but this is not the worst case. Um, so there is also. Didn't I actually record what is this guy? This guy. Oh, I missed this guy. Sorry, guys. L let me check on it quickly. No, I actually didn't hear AP2005, it's step down power regulator, I do not really know why it's there. Uh, it's interesting, unless it's required to actually step down 3.7 to 3.3, this is the only thing I can uh, relate to, that's the only possibility that this all contraption runs at 3.3 volt and you have actually step it down and regulate. So here is the hands here, it's all like a uh, circuit over here, regulation circuit. Uh, then we have a whole bunch of uh, MOSFETs around here. So those guys, like 1, 2, 3 are MOSFETs and they are 41RV1K. So it's one end channel MOSFET, 30 volt capable. So there are several of them scattered all over the place on different boards and several of them of different kinds. There is also several of F103A, no information altogether. Uh, and 42PV, not RV but PV, I couldn't find anything about it but I assume those are very similar parts because they are used in the same fashion. So 42RV1K is the analog of a 0642A clone or analog there's a whole bunch of this more information on this guy than on all these guys um, so on each of those boards there are little tiny components and in few other places called 60 uh, 662u so which is 3.3 uh, 0.5 uh, volt uh, sorry 0.5 amp uh, voltage regulator uh, a few of these uh, around here um, okay that it also uh, on here on motherboard, I, I think that as a part of a driving circuit for the motor controller, there are TI uh, MV358i, which is rail to rail op amp. Uh, looks, it's a TI. And there is another component, which is this guy, which is who knows bloody what the hell it is because I cannot. It says I 128 1000. Then next line is 2 and 3. Couldn't find anything about it. Have no clue what it is. Probably another op amp or something, but <coughs> yeah. So, and uh, one of the most interesting parts is MP65 accelerometer over here, which runs the business end in figuring out the orientation of the our camera and one of the most interesting parts is NXP Bluetooth chip as I guessed at first place so it's N51A22 so it's part of this circuit populated here there is also another uh, 662U uh, over here a few transistors and Bob's young call uh, this is probably part of the circuit to charge the camera and potentially they actually have to, I don't know if I have to boost the voltage because probably they do have to, but I don't, I don't know if it's actually boosting voltage is done here or elsewhere, but we have to have a 5 volts. So yeah, this is a bit of a kind of, where is that thing? So I'm not sure, may, may, maybe 
There's only one inductor I see here, so this is probably the, the one which used for making it 5 volts. But then I don't know why is this guy over here, which is a step down regulator. So it's kind of whatever, it's all a bit confusing because I don't have a schematic of all this business. But I'll try to actually search because people, because this is probably clone of something. I don't believe this is like, um, you know, uh, specifically designed and the only thing because when I was disassembling the previous gimbal pe people mentioned that that's sort of design already kind of known and uh, you know every people know about it so I think this is pretty much it yeah and I'm gonna put it all together because I want it actually operational I hope after the uh, recent fall on the ground oh my god that was a bad idea Recent fall on the ground. This thing will work. Um, uh, yeah, because it accidentally dropped it. So here we are. This is all s bunch of components uh, which was left. Uh, which was uh, okay. Let's put this here as well somewhere. Hoham XG1. Now my task is putting it all together.